What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, my people? Glad to have you here on Real Talk with Martin and Gordon. It's just me tonight, though. But it's got a lot going on in our sports world, so I just thought it was important that I go ahead on and, you know, do a little show, man. I don't, I don't know how long it's going to be. It might be 30 minutes, it might be 45 minutes, but just bear with me. If you're up anyway. If you're up, just enjoy the show. Uh, be interactive. You know, I will be able to see your comments real time. Let's have a good time, man. A lot to talk about, a lot to talk about. Let me, let me check one thing and I'll be ready to get going. Let me check one thing in one second. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Got a lot to talk about, man. A lot, lot, lot to talk about. Glad to be here with you guys on this Sunday night, 9.38 p.m. Make sure y'all tag and share. If you hadn't had a chance to, go ahead and real, go ahead and like our Facebook page, Real Talk with Martin and Gordon. Uh, of course, we do our community um, aspect of the show, sports. We hadn't done the sports in a while, hadn't had my co-host on here in a while. But we do the Kingdom Discussions as well on Mondays. Uh, we won't be able to do it this Monday, the Kingdom Discussions, is because we are, we're going to be uh, participating in uh, fanfare for our Lady Warriors at Amen High School basketball girls team advances on to play, I think, Lake Arthur. Uh, our, our, our male basketball team, our boys, they lost them last week, if I'm not mistaken, to Red River, same team that we played. I think we played them this past playoffs. But, uh, but it's, a, it's awesome, man, awesome season for the Lady Warriors. Uh, I hear a lot about them, hadn't got a chance to watch them play, so I'm so thankful that they got a chance to get this far, so I'll I, I make certain that I was going to be able to go to this one. It's a Monday when I'm off work anyway, and I wouldn't have missed it if I would have been at work. But uh, I wish I had gone to, to other games this season, and I'm hoping that uh, before um, Jen, and, and all those other girls, before they leave high school, I get a chance to go watch them play in person a little bit more. Because from what I hear, they are sensational. Sensational. Uh, small, but they are very skilled and talented. And I hear that they can run all day. So, man, y'all make sure if y'all uh, haven't, uh, if y'all plan on attending on tomorrow at Southeastern Louisiana University, I think the game starts at 7.30, but the doors open or the gates open at 5.30. Um, but I don't know if you can only get them online, the tickets, but I know that there is a link. It was sent to me by Coach Gordon, and uh, you have to get them online. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe you can walk up at the gate, and I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't want to speak on that. But I know I got mine online just to be safe. I don't know if they're going to have a limit, so I didn't want to be caught up in all of that. But I know they send it to you in a text message once you get your tickets and you pay for them. And there's barcodes, just like if you went to a you know big game, uh, Pelicans game or whatever. There are barcodes, and uh, they 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 have different individual numbers at the bottom of each ticket, so that when they scan them, you won't be able to duplicate the ticket. It's it's going to have its own unique number. So y'all, let's make sure we go out there and support them, man. Uh, coach, congratulations to their coaching staff, Coach Pierre, uh, Coach Ron Jackson, uh, thank Deja Brown. Uh, I think I saw another one. Uh, I know Sharika is always involved. Um, and whoever else we might be leaving out, I'm sorry, I don't mean to home. I just, I just kind of be uh, out of the loop when it comes to the basketball side of it. And just sports this year in general, hadn't really been into it like I normally do. I attended games of football, but it didn't have the same vibe, same feeling to me, uh, you know, with COVID-19 and being limited with capacity and all that stuff. It just was a funny, funny year. But anyway, man, we want to congratulate them and thank them for a great season so far, and I will be there in the building tomorrow. Lord says the same. I hope to see many of our Amy Warrior fans uh, in attendance, as I'm, as I'm sure we will. 
Moving on, man, we have, uh, what else we got? I think we got uh, LSU football. You know, you know I'm a diehard LSU fan. Uh, draft getting ready to come up. We got a lot of interesting aspects. So we got our very own Amy Heisman winner here, Devontae Smith, will be making history again. He already made history by winning the Heisman. Now he has opportunity to make history again by being the first a meat warrior drafted, if I'm not mistaken. I know we've had a meat warriors who have made it in the NFL and even have won Super Bowl and even have made the Pro Bowl in reference to Alan Recall, my classmate, my team made of 1994 state champion a meat warriors, graduated in 1995. Uh, P.J. Franklin, <clears throat> another of my classmates, teammates, went to Tulane with Sean King and uh, Jamaican Dortez and Jawan Dawson. He went to the Saints for a few years. Um, I think Lester Ricard played with Jacksonville, Cletus Gordon, um, uh, I think Porter, or is, is it, uh, Brad Porter, I believe, it's, I think it's Brad. Uh, if it's not, you know it's one of the Porter guys. Um, they went uh, for a little while. So it's others, man. I know it's going to be me if I start trying to name them. I ain't, I'm not going to know them all. But it's way more than you would think from that whole parish, but especially from Amy. But I, Devontae has an opportunity to do something that's not even been done yet by not only being drafted, being drafted in the first round and not only being drafted in the first round, potential to go from anywhere from between pick two to 15. Um, I, I, I think it's very li less likely to be after 12. Uh, you know, pick after 12, I think more likely in the uh, two to 10 range. Somewhere in there, just depending on team needs and what they do in free agency before the draft. You know, it's a lot of movement, a lot of quarterback movement, a lot of quarterback, uh, a lot of quarterbacks being disgruntled right now. So they, they they putting out rumors or putting out messages via their agents, trying to uh, you know get aroused out of the management, you know, front office management. So it's it's a big deal, man, big deal, big deal. So I'm looking forward to. Uh, to, to, to the free agency, the draft, post-draft, uh, spring. This year they'll have, looks like they'll be able to have a spring. The NFL have be able to have a spring uh, practice with the, with, the, with the rookies, and then they bring the vets on, and then they'll be able to have summer camp. Hopefully if we don't have any, uh, any more uh, negative reports dealing with COVID. I know it's going to be some still going on, but I'm talking about just continuing to go backwards. We don't want to keep going backwards with it. Uh, then I think, uh, what else I was going to say? Matter of fact, the SWAC uh, actually is playing now. Um, I, I, I don't know the dates of it and all that, but I, I caught wind, and this is just by me reading and gl gl glancing over an article about Jackson State and Deion Sanders and them getting their first win. Um, I asked the Jackson State alum, Coach Mac Michael Magnite, he said the competition is hard to gauge, you know, considering who they played, but they did blow them out. So all you can do is beat the team that's in front of you. So looking forward to swag. We don't have any other football, so hopefully they get a little bit more television uh, time and uh, we, we get a chance to see what the swag has to offer because they definitely have a lot of, a lot of buzz right now, a lot of hype, mostly, uh, mostly generated because of Deion Sanders and his, his, uh, his coaching staff at Jackson State University in Mississippi. But we are in, as a whole, we're looking forward to seeing what they do as a whole. Uh, so I'll, I'll start paying attention to it. You don't have nothing else to watch anyway, so start paying attention to it. Uh, I'm a gra I'm a, I went to Southern University. I didn't graduate from Southern. I went there from 95 to 99, but I went on to graduate from Southeastern. But as you can see, my some of my hats, I got tons of hats, but I wanted to represent some of the teams that are important to me, that mean something to me on, on my panel right quick. I don't have a camera person, so I don't have, I can't, can't pan the room and all that. So I just wanted to get some of my hats that that meant something to me in the front of me. You know, I'm a New Orleans Saints and Pelicans, Southern University, LSU Tiger, uh, you know, Southeastern Lion. You want to be honest with you, with it, uh, that's just me. You know, I'm a homer. I'm a homer type of guy. But man, let's see. I got my, I want to see if they had any new other reports going on before I dive into some of the good news, man. Uh, man, won't y'all be interactive too, man? Give me somebody to talk to. I know it's, it's 946. It's not, it's not too late. Some of you guys are up. Some of y'all up all night long. Uh, I see a few people on live watching it with me. Y'all make sure y'all join in. It's, but uh, I just want to talk about a few things, man. It's a big deal. I won't spend a lot of time on the Pelicans, but I will. I'm, I'm, I'm going to touch on them real quickly. 
uh, the New Orleans Pelicans right now, if you've been watching them, which I watch every one of their games for the most part, uh, Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, they, they, you can tell they're going to be the cornerstones of their franchise. Alonzo uh, Ball, uh, he had been inconsistent until f the month of February, which was Black History Month. I don't know if it coincided with Black History or not, but he, he balled in, in, in February. Shot almost 50% from the three-point line, I think about 17 points a game, and he shot 75% from free throw line. So, you know, if you know Alonzo since he came in the league, he, one thing he did not like to do was shoot free throws, and he had a very janky kind of shot. His form was janky. But uh, they worked on it. Uh, I think Fred Vincent, uh, one of the uh, one of the shooting, one of the assistant coaches on the Pelican staff, is a shooting coach. And uh, whatever he did, he gave him a perfect stroke. It looks good, man. He gets a good jump shot. It's a good release on his shot. Great form. And if he catches it in rhythm, he knocks him down, man. Uh, only thing I don't like is when he do the step back three. I don't like when he do a step back three. But as long as he catches it and ready to shoot when he catches it, it's it's nice. Uh, Zion Williamson is. You can tell the difference between being in shape. Condition-wise, he's still a big boy, but he's in good shape. You can tell he's running, he's playing all game, no minutes restrictions, and he's dominating. He's made his first all-star appearance. Um, Brandon Ingram is right behind him in stats, and he's been an overall distributor. You know, a lot of times Brandon Ingram and Zion are running, uh, running the offense, um, and, and they bring the ball up, making decisions. So Brandon Ingram kind of fills the box score. You know, hits all the stats, you know, assists, rebounds. Uh, Zion is, uh, is a scoring machine. It's very hard to deal with in the paint. I see him with the quick spin that he has. It's hard for people to do anything with him. If he brings that ball up the court and he gets ahead of steam going and he has an option to go either direction, it's hard to deal with him. Even though you know he's going to go left, he can jab step you to the right and he's going to still get you on his hip. And he's going to spin off of you and he's going to finish with that left hand. He has great... Uh, feel and presence of where the goal is and the basket is as it, as it relates to where he, he gets his shots off at. Most of the time around that rim, he's able to lay that ball up off that glass with some, some, some nice touch, man. Some great English that he puts on it. He got hang time. He's coming, man. Even starting to shoot a three, like one three a game. And he's been pretty good on it when it's cleanly, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this guy taking over the league for, for the years to come. He's only played uh, a little bit over 50-something odd games because he missed the majority of his rookie season. So, man, get a chance to see Zion Williamson and them add and grow. It's all good. I'm not even worried about it. Yes, of course I'd like to win more games because Pelicans seem to lose a lot of games at the end because they're still learning how to finish and who to trust in game crunch time. But as they develop Zion and Brandon Ingram and they realize that this is their team totally, they'll eventually bring that third guy on, that third superstar, third quasi all-star kind of guy. And, uh, and he'll know his role then though. He, he'll know Zion and know that his role is cemented and Brandon Ingram will know that his role is cemented and that other person will just compliment them. So I'm looking forward to them as they continue to grow. No, no expectations about for his playoffs is concerned. Yes, you'd like to see them get in it, but that's not really a big deal for me. I am really just want to see them um, continue to grow. I want to see them continue to grow. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, also, um, let's see. Uh, Anthony Davis, of course, with the Lakers, you know, he's always hurt. You know, he's going to miss 15 games a season. I love him, though. I'm not trying to be a hater <laughs> because um, when he was in New Orleans, I, I loved him. He's a great, great NBA player. Uh, I don't know if he's the leader of a team, uh, but he can be a co-leader of a team. I don't think he can, you can put the team on his back totally, but he can definitely play along with a Batman. And he's Robin, and, uh, but he's been, been out Lakers kind of lost a few games, uh, but I feel that if they got down to the playoffs in the seven-game series, I still believe that the Lakers probably have what it takes to win a seven-game series with LeBron James. Moving along, man, moving along, you know. Uh, New Orleans Saints, I know y'all want to talk about it. You know, you want to talk about it. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and dive in there right quick. No, 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 I'm not. No, I'm not, you know. <laughs> Real talk, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that right now. Because I'm a, I think I'm going to stay on them for a little minute. But uh, LSU football, man. If you're an LSU football fan, uh, their spring game is April 17th this year, Saturday. I think, they, think it'll be open to the public like always, but they probably will exercise some COVID-19 restrictions. You know how it goes. Um, I'm looking forward to the class. They had a, like a number three recruiting class, depending on most sites. Uh, 
for 21. Uh, 22 class is like ranked at number two already. They they didn't lose any steam in the recruiting aspects, even though they had a five and five mediocre season last year. But when you take all the things into consideration that they dealt with with COVID-19 and opt outs and like Jamar Chase opt out uh, at some point in the season, Terrace Marshall ended up opting out. Uh, you know, you had uh, what is it, Tyler Tyler Shelvin? I think whatever. I think it's a D tackle. He was a first round projection. He, he never played a snap this season as well. I think you had uh, Eric Gilbert, the tight end, the phenom. He left with two or three games left in the season, and he's now he's going on to transfer to Florida. So um, then they had like 14 players selected in the draft, and you know, over 20 all around overall from free agents and drafted players in the NFL. So they lost a lot. Then they dealt with COVID-19. Then you're dealing with all of the the the, the, the things that are surrounding. Uh, the football team surrounding our our world uh, with all the uh, police brutality, uh, the p police killings that transpired in this past year. Uh, a lot of the athletes, which are predominantly black, a lot of the athletes voiced their frustration this year. And they wanted the NFL and the NCAA to support them and their particular universities to support them. And the demonstrations uh, for equality and the fact that they felt in, injustice uh, with, with police uh, brutality and police abuse. So went through a lot of that, uh, even with the Drew Brees comment from earlier uh, or, or his insensitivity to what's going on as far as the black athlete is concerned, the black man is concerned. Um, it's, I don't know if so much as what he said, it's, it's the timing of what he said and the fact that it, uh, it showed a lack of empathy towards what really going on when he was uh, referencing the fact of what the flag stood for, for as far as he was concerned and his fathers and grandfathers and all that. But uh, that, was, that was really not the argument. So I, I think the season started off, even with the Saints a little bit fractured, even though they went on to be 12 and four, great season, ended short again, uh, wonderful season. Drew Brees got hurt again during the season and uh, he came back um, battled through valiantly, uh, but we fell up, fell short. But let me, as I go back to LSU though, um, I want to just, my projection for the upcoming year, um, they, first of all, they've gotten a defensive coordinator, black uh, assistant coach that was on the Minnesota coaching staff as a DB coach, been around, um, coached under even David Randa at Wisconsin and uh, was ref recommended by David Randa uh, once a few guys, uh, either got other jobs or a few guys that LSU was interested in either got other jobs or were, or were retained by their original coaching staff that went on to promotions. So once it, I think we went through two or three guys that we thought we had, and then we ended up settling, quote, quote unquote, for Durante Jones, I think his last name is Jones. Um, but I think it's gonna be a good hire because right now, more than anything, it's not only is about the X's and O's of the game, it's about uh, relatability. You know, being able to relate to the players. And I think Bo Pelini, even though I know he's a, probably a great defensive mind, he showed us back in 07 with the national championship that he was a part of with LSU as a D coordinator. He showed us this year, and I know there's a lot of things challenging for him, so it's hard to say what he would have done if they had had a chance to have an install in the spring and summer, all that, because they only reported in the almost toward the latter part of the summer. So I don't know if that's fair for him, for what he went through, but it was historically bad for the LSU team and defense as a whole. It was just a bad year. So whether it was fit, whether his unrelatability, his inability to relate to his players, whatever it was, it didn't, uh, it didn't work out for him. I see you, Damien, you're talking about LSU will win six games. I really, truly, no lie, I'm straight up, you know, I think that they, I think they can win eight, eight, to, eight to 10, a real talk. Because uh, if they play 12 games, I think they can very well win eight to nine of those games. Uh, there's no clear-cut favorite in SEC West. I know people are going to say Alabama, but that's not really true. They, they lost a lot this year. They have a, a brand-new quarterback to break in, Bryce Young, I think. And, uh, LSU, I think they're a little bit more established at that position with Miles Brennan. We have Max Johnson competing. We even have T.J. Finley competing. And LSU has a quarterback room that is uh, – that rivals any that I've ever seen at LSU and even in any other places when you have this much talent coming in in the quarterback room. Um, they even have uh, Nussmeyer 
coming in. Then they have Howard, uh, Howard, uh, what is his name? Walker Howard, uh, the son of Jamie Howard. He used to be a former quarterback, I think, back in the 90s at LSU. And these guys are ranked high in the country in their respective positions. Very highly ranked, four and five star quarterbacks. Uh, so somebody who ever wins that job is going to be somebody that's very good and that can play ball. Uh, LSU uh, has great receivers depth. They got great receiver depth. We saw uh, at the end of the year, uh, Keyshawn Butte. Uh, we saw what he was able to do. We, we know we have Coy Moore. Uh, a lot of those guys coming back, they were able to retain 20 of their 22 starters coming back on next year. That's a big deal. Alabama was able to do something like that on last year. They didn't lose anybody to opt out or to transfer. So that, that kind of correlated to them having a great season. They kept chemistry and they needed chemistry in a year like this that was so uh, unlike any other before, so unique with COVID-19 for you to be able to keep your team together. That was a big, big point for Alabama. And they went on to win a national championship with one of our very own being and being a Heisman winner and the focal point of their offense, especially once Jalen Waddle was injured along with Najee Harris and Alabama went through the season, even though it was a full SEC 10 game schedule, they went through the season unscathed and dominant, real talk. Uh, a lot of people want to argue if that team was better than the 19 LSU team. I, I'm being honest, I don't believe so. Uh, you know, people can say what they want. They played two less games. I'm not even knocking the two less games, but LSU just, they did something that was just unique. I don't, and it's, it, it hadn't been done on the offensive side at all before. Now, there, there are teams that people may argue that may have been better, you know, like Miami back in, oh, I don't know, with Warren Sapp and them, and uh, Nebraska with Tommy Frazier, a couple, you know, you can argue, but that LSU team is arguably the greatest of all time. Like I say, it's arguably, you know, you can actually argue that. I don't think Alabama team was as, as well-rounded as that. And, you know, they, 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 uh, they was great. They dominated what they had in front of them, but they don't, I don't, they didn't have a complete team top to bottom like LSU had in last year. And I just think Joe Burrow is better than Mac Jones. And I think LSU's core of receivers was better than Alabama's full core of receivers this past year, like the ones from 19 to 20. You know, they, the running backs just canceled each other out with Najee Harris and Clyde Allaire. Uh, LSU's defense probably was just a tad bit better, than, especially toward the latter part of the season on throughout the playoffs. It was a little bit better than Alabama's defense, I believe. And uh, I just think that they were special that year. That's just real talk. So that's just argument, something to, something to say, something to argue about. Um, but it's all good. Uh, like I say, man, um, a lot of people argue about the Chase and, and Devontae Smith which wide receiver is better. You'll see, if you read a lot about that, you're gonna see both have wonderful tangibles, wonderful intangibles. They are both great. I don't think you lose on either one of them. And if, you, if one's there for you and you pick him and the other one's left available, I think you're just fine. There are two different types of wide receivers, thicker body, one in Chase, and smoother one in Devontae, and being from Amy, you're going to want to be biased, but if you're just being fair, those, those guys are comparable to each other. And if you got either one of them, I don't think you'd be upset about that. Uh, uh, Devontae's senior season was one of the greatest of all times, and Chase's had been up until Devontae's last year. Uh, he had more targets, but he also was was keyed on more, you know, because when Waddle got hurt, he, everybody knew he was, he was gonna get the ball and they still couldn't stop him. And, and, and Chase's defense, you could say, well, Chase had another 1,500 yard receiver with 18 touchdowns next to him, plus a, another receiver with 800 and something yards receiving and 12 or 13 touchdowns that he had to share the ball with, plus Clyde Hilaire. And so he had 84 receptions for 1,780 some yards and 20 touchdowns. And uh, so some people will argue that, that if he had uh, 133 receptions, uh, I think that's the number, something like, it's over, well over 100, it's almost 30 some receptions more uh, by Devontae than Chase had in 19. They'd say that, you know, Chase numbers would be more. So like I say, man, I don't think you go wrong with either one of them. Um, I hate that they're not having the, the combine, so we can see them, but they will have their pro days, and I hope that they perform at their pro days. I don't know if it hurt them or not. I think they're going to still go respectively, one behind the other, whoever goes first, whatever. I don't, but I, it would be good to see them perform in their pro days. Uh, I know the kind of competitors that Devontae is, Tay-Tay, that's what we call him here. 
Um, I just remember watching him here in high school. He went on to, to the next level and he superseded that. And so you can't bet against him. You, you best to rest assured that he's working now. Uh, I imagine Chase is working. He had a whole season to get ready for this combine and this draft and, and all that. He did not play, so I'm assuming and I'm hoping that he worked on himself. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a great crop of them, man. Those two are the top receivers. And then you, if you want to call Kyle Pitts a slash receiver slash tight end, then you group him up in there with him. But if you're just saying pure wide receivers, it's those two. And even Terrace Marshall most likely is projected at the latter part of the round one, even though he opted out his last two or three games. He, he's 6'3", six, 6'4", six, run about a 4'4 four, four and a 40, long stride, uh, show some twitch ability, uh, can definitely can high point the ball, uh, got, need to get a little bit more consistent, focusing on the ball, a few drops that he probably shouldn't drop, but I know he has great hands. I've seen him high point balls and catch tough balls. So um, if I was the Saints and, and I couldn't get what I wanted and whatever I wanted was going at 28, I wouldn't mind picking Terrace Marshall because uh, uh, the other ones won't be there at that point. Um, Mook, you know, it's just, it's just something to look forward to for the whole city of Amy, Amy High School, uh, for the parents of Tay Tay, uh, for the tangible parents, for the state of Louisiana to watch him. Get drafted. I wish it was like the normal time pre-COVID, where they would be in New York with their suit on and uh, go up there and get they put their hat on, with, shake Roger Goodell's hand with their mother and their parents there at the game. I mean, at the at the venue, uh, at the draft day. I wish it was that way. On um, last year, they did something new, and it went over well. It went over much better than people thought. I, it went over better than I thought. People got a chance to experience that moment at home in the confines of their own homes or own places of comfort, whether they be at home in a football stadium that they're used to or around family and friends, and they were able to soak it up casual, not getting dressed all up, being casual, and they looked a little bit more relaxed and loose. So that had its benefits as well. But I think it's still special to, to kind of be one of those ones selected to, to attend the draft day, because that's never been done by nobody, from, by anybody from Amy. Um, where we actually got a chance to attend draft day, be in the room, and knowing that you're going to be selected in the, in the high, high part of the round, early part of the round. So uh, it's going to be amazing, though. Uh, the Heisman was amazing. Uh, try, I try to compare which one of those events is the biggest. You know, when you say the Heisman, when the Heisman, when all those odds are against you, first of all, it's, it's tough for non-quarterbacks to win it anyway. And back in the days when running backs dominated football, they won a few, a good bit too. But wide receivers don't win a lot um, because they need somebody to get the ball to them, which is the quarterback. And if the quarterback got them to them where it was Heisman worthy, most of the time the quarterback was Heisman worthy. And so that's just how it's going for him to get through all of that and win the Heisman. It's just something that you will never, it, like I said, LS, Louisiana only has three born Heisman winners, meaning born in the state of Louisiana and has gone on to win a Heisman. If you count Joe Burrow as being a Louisiana winner, then we have four. Three of them went to LSU, which is Billy Cannon, uh, John Crow, I think. Maybe I'm probably messing up. So it's something like that, John Eric Crow or something like that in 1959. 57, then 59 and Billy Cannon. And then 2021, uh, from the 40, 20, 2020 season was Devontae Smith. You know, and if you call Joe, Joe Burrow, then you say 19, of course. But if you say Louisiana born, Devontae was the third of all time. It's been 85 Heismans, 85 years of Heisman winners. Two of them in Louisiana were, were white quarterbacks in 1950s, late 1950s. And the next one was Devontae Smith from Butler Town, USA. <laughs> Man, that's like, that ain't that. So that's huge to me. You know, this is never, ever, ever taken away. And then you say, if you compare that to being drafted high, you know, top 10, what do you equate those two? They both awesome. Uh, one of them, both of them uh, signify uh, massive increase in not only popularity, but in endorsements and in monetary value. Uh, they both signify that. Uh, the, the NFL is the ultimate destination for any football player who dreams of being a pro. That's the ultimate of the ultimate. That's the top of the top. You have, you have made it to the top of your craft. You know, and now you want to make your mark when you get there, but you have made it to the top of your craft. It's a very small percentage. I wish I had the number in front of me of the percentage of 
football players that go on to be NFL players. It's very small. I'm serious. It's small. I remember it. Just can't remember it verbatim, but it's a small number. So for you to be picked, it's awesome, man. So uh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Both of them go down in history for him and his family forever. And even for people for A meet and Tantro Paris just to be able to feel like we are part of it. You know, to say you saw him play in high school, to say you actually went to practice when he was here, to know stories about him firsthand as a coach, as a Pee Wee League coach, as a junior high school coach, you know, as a as a high school defensive coordinator coach and a mentor and Vincent Sanders and a defensive coach and Christopher Gordon and a head coach and Zephaniah Powell and, and uh, Alden Foster. Larris Foster, Montre Walker, all those guys had, had, a, had a hand in it. And even the fans that cheered him on every Friday night for four years, they had a hand in it. So it's a, it's a special, special moment. Special moment, I'm looking forward to that day. Don't know the plans for the family, uh, what they plan to do for that, uh, but, it, but I look forward to that day. And uh, so moving on, man, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's see. Take another quick break, right quick, give me a sec. Welcome back, welcome back to Real Talk with Martin and Gordon. But it's just the Martin half of here today. Um, I want to give a speedy recovery to my homeboy, Christopher Gordon, the co-host, dealing with a little uh, sickness right now, you know? Uh, and I'm not talking about no COVID or nothing like that, but uh, he, he had planned on being on this show today. So I, I wasn't going to do it, and then I just started thinking about all the stuff going on and the fact that we're gonna not do Kingdom discussions on tomorrow. And I said, you know, let me go ahead and, and do a sports show tonight. Um, so once I got free, I decided to come on. So hope it's not too late. Even if it's late and you're not watching it live, you know, you'll be, I'll have it on there and I'll share it. And you'll be able to see it in the morning on your way to work. Wouldn't be nothing better than to tune in to my personal take, you know, from yours truly, man. Um, I think I have a lot to say about it and I hope you value my opinion and my thought process when it comes to this. I'm trying to be fair, you know what I'm saying? And uh, thank you for the people who do view the show and who, who do tune in to our show, man. It's, it's a privilege and it's an honor to have somebody interested in what you have to say. Moving on, man, we're gonna dive into the Saints stuff right quick. You know, I know as a Saints fan, uh, we got a lot of rumors, a lot of rumors, a lot of rumors, you know what I'm saying? A lot of rumors, you know, from Deshaun Watson to Russell Wilson. And, you know, as a, as a real deal, diehard fan, and one who studies his team um, every day, um, which one seems the most realistic? Russell Wilson. And it's not because he's, he's better than Deshaun, because if you were going to pick Deshaun, if you really, if we had a chance to get Deshaun, I think you'd go after Deshaun, because he's a good bit younger, probably like six or seven years younger. But Russell Wilson is a proven quarterback in the NFL. He's won a Super Bowl, been to two. Great quarterback. I'd love to have him. You can almost guarantee, without serious injury, at least five years of straight Super Bowl contention if you get him on our team, the way we're structured and built, and the kind of GM we have. Everybody keeps talking about our salary cap and being 100 million over, and then we shaved off 30 million. Now we're about 69 million over the cap. Man, don't worry about that. If you're a Saints fan, you've been watching the Saints for years when people have been talking about how are we going to maneuver around the cap. Now, I will be honest, this was higher than any time before being over it, but it was, in, it was with the anticipation that the, the team salary caps would, 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 would be rise tremendously from 175 to 235 for the TV deals. 
But because of the COVID-19 and the lack of fans at stadiums, the, they, they, didn't, they didn't generate the revenue they expected to generate. So instead of it going from 175 to 235, in which we would only still be, uh, wait, wait, wait. we would only still be maybe 30 something million still over. Well, it just went to 180, it went up 5 million. And we are still currently 60 something million dollars over, but many, much of that will be fixed with restructure, restructuring of contracts and actually losing a couple players that we probably don't want to lose, but you can't pay for all of them. We've built our team in a win now mode for the last five years, trying to accommodate Drew Brees' uh, a desire and our desire to capture that all too, uh, that all too elusive, for lack of another word, that elusive championship title. And we, the last time we won it was in 2010 from the 2009 football season. So it's been tough, it's been 12 seasons and we have not gotten back. We've been very close several times, but we have not quite gotten back. So because we build our team that way and we don't do the total rebuilds, you know, you have to pay, you're gonna have to pay at some point. We've been kicking the, kicking the, kicking the bucket down the road for quite a while, but Mickey Loomis has been renowned for being able to do that. Uh, our front office, along with another guy, I can't think it's Kai something, they're great at it, you know, Mickey Loomis is good at it. He had Ryan Pace with him for a little while, he's great at doing it. And I, I have all the utmost faith that they'll figure out a way to keep our team competitive, like he said, as well as get underneath that salary cap. So that's my expectation, but Russell Wilson, a lot of people want to say, Russell Wilson didn't just not really want to be traded, but he's saying if he were to be traded, the four teams that he'd be traded to or like to go to because he has a no trade clause that he would enforce would be, and no, this is in no particular order, would be the Dallas Cowboys, um, the New Orleans Saints, the Chicago Bears, and the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, when you look at those teams in totality and, and what they have to offer it from, the, from Russell Wilson's point of view, I agree with Colin Cowherd when he said that New Orleans is the best destination for him. They are structured properly. They have an offensive line and known for having great offensive line play. Great offensive, creative-minded head coach in Sean Payton, which is one of the things that Russell Wilson has been adamant about uh, being a part of the play calling and the uh, construct of their offensive play calling and being more creative. He does not like, uh, he feels that they are outdated and uh, he feels that they dismiss him when he brings ideas to the coaching staff. So Sean Payton would definitely wel welcome him and uh, he, he's an upgrade from Drew Brees. I'm not saying from everything that Drew Brees has done for us, but the Drew Brees that we've seen the last five years, he's an upgrade from that because he's every bit as smart as him, every bit as accurate as him, but he has a bigger arm and he's way more athletic. Not, not much taller in height, he's about the same height probably, but he's, uh, but he's so much more athletic and has a laser of it on, and he can throw that deep ball and open up our offense a lot more. So I, I would love to see Russell Wilson. It's more realistic than the Deshaun Watson because I just can't see us being able to give Houston enough of what they want without tearing our team totally apart. It's a, it's a, it's a fine line between giving them too much and, 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 and building for the future. Uh, you, yes, you would have a trans, uh, you would have a transcendent quarterback in Deshaun or Russell, but you also don't want to have them there at your team and lose all the things that made them want to come to your team from the beginning by depleting your team and making your team be in real rebuild mode. So I think New Orleans would be able to pull it off. If, 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 so what I would say, I'm pretty certain every four teams that was mentioned got on the phone with this agent just to even talk about it. And they probably called Seattle to find out would it be realistic and what would they want from them so they can put a package together. Now, if I'm any of those teams and that has a guy that they, they have told that maybe a starter, i.e. the Saints and James Winston, you don't want to publicize the fact that you're looking into the Russell Wilson sweepstakes. But you got to keep that quiet and on the backside. But you know, and, and, and you know that you have to, you have to entertain that, and you have to dig in that a little bit just to find out if there's, um, if there, if there's any truth to that. So if you, you wouldn't be doing your due diligence if you didn't. So the Saints are probably working the phones, trying to see if they can practice something that is realistic that would make Seattle happy. Seattle probably may not really want to get rid of Russell, but. Maybe they're stubborn and they'll 
be willing to, to try something different. But you got to have something to give them back. We do have a roster stack full. We don't have no, we don't have the great draft picks this year because we'll be picking at 28. And if you get Russell Wilson, your following year's picks will not be high. You don't want them to be. You expect to be picking like 32. I mean, if you pick 32, that means you won the Super Bowl or if you didn't catch that. If you pick 29, 30, 31, 32, you got in the playoffs pretty far. So that's what you want to be picking. So your picks won't equate to much, but the players that you have combined with those picks may make them move a little bit. And if they don't like it, the good thing about it is his no trade clause will not allow them to send him anywhere. He has to send them amongst the best of those four offers that they get. You know, so Saints got to put a package together. If not, I'm willing to do the James Winston try. Real talk, I, I'm willing to even be 8-8. Eight and eight. Y'all heard my rant at the end of the season. I'm cool with being 8-8 eight and eight if it allows us to find our future quarterback in doing so or lets us know who's not going to be. So if we give James a try as a starter and he fails in this whole season and does not live up to what we hope he does, then we'll know that and we can move on. So I wouldn't be mad. I don't mind if we 8-8 eight because eight, we've been 12-4 and four and 13-3 and, and we still have come up short of winning the Super Bowl. And to me, it does not matter if you get 13 to three, and then you get to the last game and lose the game before the Super Bowl, or if you lose the first round, or if you just be eight and eight. Yeah, people are like, no, you want, you, yes, you do want to be in the playoffs. But I'm saying at this point, where we are as a franchise, I'm cool with not just doing 12 and four right now and then losing in the first round. I'm cool with being eight and eight if it allows us to find our quarterback. On the other hand, if we find the quarterback and we're able to get into the playoffs with James, then so be it. I'm great. I'm glad. I'm, either way, I'm cool. I want to see what the future looks like without Drew. And that is no knock on Drew. I appreciate everything he's done. I appreciate the stability that he's brought to our organization, the cachet that he's brought, the swag, the, um, the, uh, com the camaraderie, the team uh, bonding, the, the way that we're viewed nationally, uh, to players, free agent players that are maybe thinking about a place to go and play for a championship. He's provided that for us for a long time, 15 seasons. And, but sometimes it's time to go. And, and I've realized some of those greatest competitors sometimes have to be told that it's time to go because they don't know how to leave on their own. They just don't know how to leave. And I'm not saying Drew Brees couldn't still win 11 games because he can. What I'm saying is it has to be an ideal world and he has to not get hurt and you have to wonder what he can do in the playoffs when it's get crunch time. Can he carry you? I don't think he can carry us anymore. I think he can work with a team that's great already, but I don't think Drew Brees can carry us anymore because he's just getting old. It's not his fault. They don't make him bad. They don't make him garbage. They don't make him whack. That makes him older, man. He's given us 15 years of straight dominance. Hall of Fame first battle. I don't want to feel no... I don't want to feel any less for him, so I want him to walk away before it gets bad. You know, I don't want him to get hurt anymore. I don't know how injured he was, but when you get 11 fractured ribs, you got a lot of other stuff wrong too. And it came out that it had a this Frank foot surge injury, a rotator cuff in his shoulder, like a lot of stuff, man. He tried to fight through that, and it showed. So Tampa Bay just dared us to throw the ball past 15 yards, and that's just what they did. And we still could have won without four turnovers, real talk. They didn't move the ball on us. They had average field position at the 46th of ours. They just capitalized on turnovers and short fields. Um, but we had a chance to win them, and I think if Jerry Cook does not fumble that ball, even as bad as Drew played, if Jerry Cook doesn't fumble, we go up by two scores, and I think that'll pretty much put them out of here. And we probably go on to win the Super Bowl just like Tampa Bay did, a real deal. But uh, it is what it is, you know. But I am uh, looking forward to uh, one of these headlines when I wake up in the morning that says something that, you know, nobody else don't want to hear. Like, if you're a Saints hater, you ain't going to want to see what I'm talking about. But what I'm going to say, you know, what I'm probably going to say, you know, New Orleans Saints complete say, uh, what you want to call it, a massive NFL record-breaking trade, you know, pre-draft. They get Russell Wilson for blah, blah, blah. And uh, get Russell Wilson, it changes the way we draft and uh, changes the way we construct our team and all that. You know what I'm saying? The Saints have, they have always said all year and for the last two years that the Saints have probably the most complete roster in the NFL from top to bottom. 
That's real. That's why we have to lose players in free agency that go start on other teams. That's why we have practice squad guys who get picked up from our practice squad and go be, make and go make other teams 53-man roster. Real talk. That's real talk. So uh, I look forward to, to the draft. I look forward to all the pre-draft. I look forward to these rumors that keep you going, keep you having something to do. Um, don't be surprised if you see me do an emergency post or emergency podcast slash emergency show. You know something is going on and I must report it. You know what I'm saying? So just, just stay tuned for that. But I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I'm definitely, definitely, definitely looking forward to um, what, what, what we're going to do in the future. And if it's just that nothing happens and we just let James go into the season as the starter because he earned it, I'm fine with that as well. Keep a, keep a few Taysom Hill packages, but let James take the bulk of the snaps, and I want to see what James can do under, under Sean Payton with a full offseason of preparation. Uh, he, yeah, he was here last year, but he didn't get the spring camp. He didn't get the summer camp. I want to see him with a full year just like Teddy got. Teddy got the whole year, and then the next year, he got a chance to play his five games. I want to see what James can do. So uh, looking forward to that as a, as a Saints fan, um, anticipating – Draft day moves because the Saints are known for being aggressive during draft. Uh, looking forward to all of that, man. Um, looking forward to uh, Devontae Smith being drafted in the, in, in, in the NFL and what team he may go to. And uh, I know I'm have to get a jersey wherever that team is. Um, even if I did not wear it, uh, I'm definitely going. It's something for me to put in my, in a frame and put up in my in my in my man cave bar area that you see me doing a show from tonight. Uh, it's an honor, man. It's an honor, man. I just look for. I look forward to LSU bouncing back from 2020 to 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 going on back being respectable like they're supposed to be, and even potentially easing into the playoffs possibly. Uh, but definitely uh, market improvement and and, and buy-in from the players that are there now. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. They have a chance to have probably the top cornerback tandem if uh, Stingley and Elias Ricks are able to play throughout next season. That's you can't get no better than that at the cornerback spot. Uh, Mason Smith, they got the number one D tackle in the nation, I think. Uh, if he's not number one in the nation, he's definitely top two or three, but number one in Louisiana for certain. And I think nation. He was a five star for sure. Um, talent, 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 talent team. Hope to see Devontae Lee get on the field this year. Um, from what I'm hearing, he's back at wide receiver slash tight end. Uh, I don't know if they plan on using him as the hybrid, like an H-back, like they did Irv Smith in Alabama a couple of years ago, Irv Smith Jr., but I want to see Devontae Lee get on the football field this year. I'm hoping. I know he works hard. Uh, I know he, he's very talented. Um, he's been switched around positions and position after position, uh, but I'm hoping this is the year that everything comes together for him and his family. I want to see him play because um, he's a good um, kid, just like Devontae Smith, man. We got, we got Tyrus Wheat, Mississippi State linebacker from A.M. We got them all over the place. I, I, I hope and wish the best for all of them. Hope they stay injury free and that they're able to realize their full dreams of probably playing in the NFL one day. I, want, I hope they all get a chance to do that. Uh, the fact that A.M. has that opportunity now and, and that and the spotlight is so bright on us now, you have to give, uh, you have to give thanks to all those history, the long history list and long laundry list of great teams that have come through Amy, but you also got to give a lot of credit to the social media world that we now live in and this YouTube world and this 707 camp world that, that we're in and, and Devontae Smith and his, and his time frame and what he's been able to do on a national level, it brings the spotlight on Amy even brighter than it has ever been. So I'm saying, man, I have a lot of expectations for this upcoming season, man. Uh, and all, on all phases, I'm hoping that we can get a handle on COVID so that we'll be able to resume our homecoming festivities for a meeting that we had just started and got going and we had broke some serious chains and had gotten that thing to a wonderful, wonderful level in just two years. And, then I, and I hate losing that momentum on last year and I'm hoping that this year we get some type of indication uh, with COVID that, that we are able to feel comfortable about moving forward because it's something that takes a lot of planning and you cannot put it together in two months. It's too many, uh, uh, too many approvals that you have to get and it's too much, uh, it's too many um, 
requests that must be met, too many obligations that must be fulfilled for you to put it together in two months. You have to have the same amount of time we always use. We start February, January every year, and we push it all the way through until it's time for homecoming. And I think you gotta have something close to that. And if you don't get an idea in the next month or so, you're gonna probably be at a, at a point when you kinda can't do a big homecoming for this 21 season either. So I don't know, I don't know how that's gonna go. That's outside of our control, but we're just praying for the best for everybody, praying for health and safety for everybody, man. If you was possibly listening to this show and help keep you up while you was on your way home from work, then hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so thankful that it was, it was able to help you in that way. If you just was listening for entertainment, just so you can just see, or uh, you wanted the information because you figured that you kind of could rely on what I have to report about, then thank you for, for, for trusting in me to bring you some real content. Yeah I, it's, yeah, I have my own opinions on certain things, but I always base that on stuff that I know. I mean, I know stuff I read all the time. I'm always watching just like a lot of other guys, so I report on it in a manner that is uh, trying to be unbiased as far as possible. But I, but I report the truth, straight facts. So uh, before we get off here, I want to make sure that you guys remember to go and support your Lady Warriors on tomorrow if you have an opportunity. I think they play at 7.30 at Southeastern Louisiana University. Find out how you can get your tickets. I know that I was sent a link today. And um, by Coach Gordon, and I, and I went online and I paid for my tickets online. Um, and then, you know, they text you the tickets in a text message with the barcodes for each individual ticket. So I don't know if that's the only way you can get your tickets. I don't know if you can get them at the gate and all that, but y'all need to find out so you don't go up there and then be disappointed. So please go and support them, man. Push them on, man. man maybe we can get a state championship out of these girls this year. The way they're playing, it sounds like they have a very great chance. And I hear the team that they're playing is a very good team. So I, I didn't go to no games this year, and I'm sorry for that. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I got to do better with that. Uh, but I am glad to be able to say that I'm going tomorrow. So I'll be in the building tomorrow supporting them, and I hope they go on to – uh, win that round and win the next round so they, they can go and play for a state championship. And uh, and if they do, I plan on being in the building all the way to the end of the season when it's over with. So, man, I thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you for watching and listening. You know what I'm saying? I always appreciate you guys giving me your, your little bit of your attention. It don't matter if it's just a second. It don't matter if you're just letting it play and you're walking off. But just the fact that you tuned in and I see your, your views on, on, on my live is cool for me. Um, it makes me know that it's not wasted and it's not wasteful. So thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us. Please go subscribe to my YouTube page, Real Talk with Martin and Gordon, and like a Facebook page of the, of the same name, Real Talk with Martin and Gordon. Remember, it's not about being liked. It's not even about how people feel. As long as you make sure that whatever you say, you bring passion, you show respect, and most importantly, you keep it real. And that's Real Talk with Martin and Gordon. It's in the books. Thank you.